Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony North Easton. Uh, it's been a little while um, since, uh, well, since I've done anything on the layout. Uh, you've had a few movies, um, what with the, the Green Menace finally getting caught and, uh, and what have you. Um, and you had the uh, W1 Hush Hush Challenge, uh, which both locos survived and um, lived to run on the layout another day. But um, yes, um, well, once this was finished, um, I wasn't sure where to go because well, basically I was a little bit lost, to be honest, because the focus for the last, well, 18 months or so was to get this station um, at least um, finished so we could do some trains running in and out and um, now that it's done where do we go from here? I can hear you all saying that um, yeah so where do we go from here? now I have a few pubs on the layout already but one more wouldn't go amiss. Now I have not scratch built a pub yet until now and um, last year around about October time we took a trip to Bath and we had a look around the city and I come across this little pub squeezed between some shops and this great gothic church and I thought yeah, that's not a massive pub, but it'll fit in nicely somewhere on the layout, so let's go and have a look at it. And here it is. It's the Saracen's Head. Um, and what I like about it is, is the actual size and shape and it's made of sandstone and um, it's got character and I think it'll be a quite an easy one I'm saying that <laughs> loosely mind um, to build um, I haven't got a scooby-doo what it looks like at the rear of the building um, but all I've got at the moment is this photograph um, that I had taken and I had downloaded some other photographs because um, obviously that's looking at it from uh, this side and basically we need a photograph that looks at it from this side so I can see what's beyond the door and at least get an idea of the size I need to um, build this thing because um, obviously there's no bricks to count um, there's nothing really to gauge sizes off except the door um, which I have plenty of doors I have one similar to that with the um, twin panels on the bottom um, so that would give you me an idea of, of the height. So it's roughly at least probably two and a quarter doors to there. And we can work out the rest by, um, um, well, just by looking at it and placing windows on a piece of card and seeing what looks best. Um, here we have another photograph which I have downloaded off the internet and basically it hasn't changed that much since the 1800s this was taken in 1825 and obviously the church next door is a little bit smaller so obviously they must have knocked that down and built a bigger church but they built it right up to the edge of this pub now it's <laughs> The, the windows have changed here, they've got the, the mesh type so I'm thinking I might play along with that and leave them as it were but these windows here look original to what they are today um, the next photograph I've got is another one I have downloaded off the internet which shows a view I'm after from 
this side. So that's great. I've got all the front details I want. So what about the back? Hmm. Something I might have to just tinker with and uh, use a little bit of uh, license in the design. So I have spent the last couple of days drawing up plans and here we have the plan. So I've managed to get all the sizes I needed to build at least the front half of the pub. And obviously I've got a side view here um, but um, it doesn't show the extension I plan to put on the back so if I flip this over this is what I'm going to do as you can see this is the front and I'm just going to extend the back as if though it was a terraced house and um, as you know it there I've got the chimney in the middle but I might put that right at the back but uh, we shall see about that and there we have the extension there which has just come out 35 mil and we've got 76 across there which is basically the same as I flip this back over the 73 that we got there it's only three mil difference but um it's roughly it's it's one of them but put put on the back so that is how I have drawn it. Um, obviously, I have moved the chimneys back, but in hindsight, I've seen the photographs, so I might put them back again. But I don't think they're chimneys because if you look at the original photograph, I think just think they're ornamental stones like you would find in Turkey or somewhere like that, where you've got this. Um, pinnacles there, I don't even think they're chimneys but if you look it's all a question of photographs in this photograph you can see I only spotted it today the chimney there great big chimney which is not fixed to this building but if you look at it it runs down the side of this building and the roof goes around it so so the chimney's on the side and uh, even in this photograph you can't see any chimneys on this side otherwise you'd, they'd be protruding in the painting there so notice there's no gutter in either no downpipes like we've here, here see that they must have been added so that's the pub, that's the project, and this is the drawing. So, first project of 2022 is a pub. Now then, windows and doors. We have windows and doors. This is where I've gotten my sizes from. Obviously, I am going to shrink these doors down a little bit. I thought they were too tall. One's going to go there, one's going to go there to make it, make it smaller because looking at that, the photographs again, the doors are quite small. I guess they made the doors um, a lot smaller in them days. And the windows, I've just drawn around them and placed them where I thought they would go and match up and that's how I had planned the whole front just by placing the doors and windows and working out the width of the front so the width of the front is a hundred and forty six wide can't quite see that there but that's 146 wide so I have made 
all the dimensions um, basically um, just by placing the um, windows and doors on the sheet. So why they've got these on the top of here in the photographs I ain't got a clue why they've done that because I think these are just decorative so I may just put them back there and maybe have a chimney either in the centre here or further back but uh, we'll decide that as we're going along So, with this in mind, let's get started. So, first things first is the doors and windows. And as you can see, I'm using Will's Kit Scenic Series for the windows and the doors. Um, mainly these are going to be the back doors, because I'm using the other doors for the front. Um, the front there I'm going to have to scratch build that which uh, should be uh, quite interesting to do. So we shall start with the doors. Uh, the doors are from laser cut and all I'm doing is just slightly modifying them. So. Um, I'm taking out the center crosses off the doors and I'm also trimming them down to 28 millimeters by 15 millimeters wide. So basically, I'm just taking Two mil off the bottom and half a mil off the top because these are 30.5 in height and then what I'll do once I've cut them I shall glue them together So it's a 2 mil from the bottom and 0.5, half a mil from the top, which is just a tiny sliver about that, I think. Yeah, that's it. About, about that. Gently score on it and then take it off that and hopefully that should end up at 15 millimeters there you go 15 millimeters we have now glued uh, the two halves of the door together uh, with some super glue after trimming and now we're going to concentrate on the shop front um, so these are the sizes that I had done on the drawing so basically we just got a square window and a door frame so we just start gluing these together using some of this uh, polystyrene quick contact that we get the right angles right angle just use those lines as a guide I think for now we'll see once the door goes in, it will square it up. Yeah. 
Now the plastic strip I'm using is 1.5 square and what I'll be doing then is once the frame is made up I'll be putting some infills of 1mm square around the inside. Right, so as you can see we've moved on a little tiny bit. We've got the 1.5 creating the outer frame and I'm just going to go inside with the 1mm to create a inner frame just to add a little bit more detail. Um, so it's just a case of cutting and, and gluing basically. For the other um, door, I'm just going to um, use the same material, 1.5 square, to create the, the frame. And with this door, I'm just going to put a little bit of a threshold onto the door so we can um, have the door open. So we can uh, have a sneaky peek in once it's finished. So we can. Uh, see if there's any details that I'll add, which there will be because I always uh, like to add stuff into my buildings. So there you go, so that there. So let's try. And all I've got to do then is just add the door. Once that gets a hold. Right, so that's the door frame. And now I'll put glue the door at an angle like that so we can actually be able to see through the door. Don't know what we're going to actually see when it's uh, done. Yeah, something like that. So the door will be open. And that completes the main entrance. Um, what I've done on the back, I've super glued a piece of paper down the back on the frame and onto the door. It's roughly about uh, three mil wide, wide for, uh, folded, and then just glued on. And hopefully that will keep the door open. It's, it's quite rigid already. So let's the main entrance door finished. Yeah, so these pieces are just under 20 millimeters. So it's roughly 19.8. So it's just a case of just trimming them down and making sure they fit without kinking. Because sometimes if you try and force them in, they'll kink up in the middle. And we don't particularly want that, so it's just a fine, fine cut. You barely can see it, and then hopefully that'll just slip in there. Just keep trimming until you get the nice fit that you're after. Yep, that'll do nicely. And we shall drop that in. Just make sure we're equal to equal equal. There you go. So what we'll do next, we'll just put the other cross members going the other way. And hopefully we can straighten up these um, vertical pieces as we go. Because there's still a little bit of a spring in them. So now we're just going to glue the last and final cross members in. I've already pre-trimmed them so it's just a case of just sticking them in. Basically there's no <laughs> measurements here it's all done roughly by eye and uh, getting them to look 
as equal as they can be. Now then, over the years, um, the obviously the paint decor for the pub has changed. Um, as you've seen in the photographs, you've got blue, you've got black. Um, I've even seen pictures of the framework done in green. Um, and basically, I'm going to go with the black, including the window frames. So I'm just going to do now a little bit of um, plastic weld into the corners. That will then seal that and just tidy up any loose glue. So now we have the main windows and doors done. So we shall put them to one side while we concentrate on the name sign next, which is this here. Um, in the drawing we have it's slightly tapered um, basically this will then glue onto the window frame and hopefully I'll leave enough room for the 4mm lettering um, so we've got 9mm and uh, obviously I'll have to um, cut the plastic strip and create the edge in top and bottom and uh, see what it looks like. So now we have cut a piece of um, plastic strip to form the name sign. So it's just going to be glued onto the centre of that 1.5 square plastic strut there. So, this stuff is uh, 0.8 thick and it's 60 millimeters from that point to that point and 63 millimeters from that point to that point and then just chamfered off, chamfered off and the pieces that I've chamfered off I'm going to use to um, sort of set the name sign off at an angle like so. So once that's glued on that edge, it'll just be off like that at that angle. So what we'll do is we'll glue these pieces in. There's four of them. Hopefully that'll be enough to strengthen it up. Like so. We'll just glue them right angles to this and then hopefully the shape of the chamfer will offset it slightly so let's just see how we get on so we have our nameplate as it were with the mitered corners on and if you look closely it's 90 degrees at the top so when this actually gets fitted to the building it'll be slightly sloped as you can see so what I'm doing now I'm just capping it off um, with, and then we can hopefully start um, adding the names or the lettering to the name plate or name board I just got a little tiny bit bigger And this will give it its strength, hopefully. Just using one mil, it's a little bit thicker this, so it's one mil um, by six, I think it is. Just uh, no, one mil by five. And I should just overhang the front a little bit. Just a fraction. There we go. Yep, so that will work. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use some 1mm um, round rodding 
to basically create a frame within the sign and then the lettering hopefully should fit in between I just hope there's enough space for the lettering the four millimeters lettering so we shall see about that one so that's what I want to do next just trimming and cutting the one mil round rodding to go around the inside of this frame so as you can see the one mil strip around the name sign once it's painted we'll just add that little bit uh, extra detail so this is the final piece it just needs trimming back to fit um, I've mated them so we can get a nice good clean joint it just needs a little bit more off of this one because it's a little bit long and just try and keep it so the mitres or facing each other. Um, the top mitre is quite sharp. I've just got to take that little bit off of there and take a little bit more off this one. And we shall try it in there. That's the thing about mitre joints, you've got to keep trying them and trying them until you get a nice good fit. Right, so now we can start putting the lettering on. So we have our letters now. Uh, these are four millimeter letters by Slaters. Um, as you can see, I might just about get it in there. So, first of all, I'm going to lay, lay them in there, uh, get their spacings, and then we'll just um, glue them in. So as you can see, there's just enough room to get all the lettering in. So I noticed I've marked a couple of pencil lines there, just so we've got a little bit of a gap between the two main words on the name sign. So that was a very close call. So that's the first um, pieces of the Saracen's head. I think the most important pieces because uh, without these I won't be able to do the measurements that I need for the rest of the build. So it's always good to do your windows and your doors first. Um, and that way you can lay out uh, a building plan of your own and work out your dimensions from that so the next thing I want to do is to paint these and then we can move on to the main build so so far we have made the door frame and the what looks to be a shop frame and sign um, so, while I've been waiting for the paint to dry, I have started to cut out some of the card. So we have the front, two sides, and the back piece. Now the back piece is more or less the same as the front, but just a couple of millimeters wider. We shall go into that later on, so that will go there. That would go there and there. 
So what we have got, we've got these two ends, the front and the back, and basically it's more or less a T shape. Um, the, how I'm going to produce the building. Um, obviously I haven't done a drawing for that view to see what I'm doing here. I might just add a couple of windows in there but I'm going to leave the ends with no windows at all so that if uh, need be I can put up buildings to it because I'm not sure where this is going on the layout because um, well basically this project was never planned it was just a, a fill in while I get my head around where I'm going next so, as you can see, if I move those out of the way, I have started to scribe the front face with a pencil. Now, as I said earlier, there's, there's no bricks here, so there's just going to be stone. And I'm not pressing overly hard because, to be honest, I don't want the stone to shine through the paint, as it were. I just want to show that it's there if you know what I mean so that's what I'm doing it's roughly three mil spacings uh, more or less what we've got on the tiles uh, so it's a little bit bigger than your normal bricks because your bricks are about one and a half mil um, spacings and I'm doing this now um, before I cut out for the windows and doors, although I've already marked it here and here for the the windows uh, and the doors, but I haven't done the main windows yet. So this is where we're up to now, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not pressing overly hard as if I was doing roof tiles, because, um, like I said, I do not want the stone to come through the paint um, predominantly as it were so I shall continue this while the paint is drying there's one last job I have to do before I paint these and that's to put in a door handle so what I've done is I'm getting some fine scale pins and I will trim them down so that it's just two or three mil plus the head and then I will drop the pin through there and then super glue it on and then it looks like we have a doorknob and it's just a case of painting that gold or silver or any colour you like well as long as it's metallic of course and I do think the black and gold do go well together um, so I'm, I'm quite happy with the way that that's turned out um, the lettering scale well it's a bit on the large side but it's uh, it does stand out and um, yeah be interesting to see how it affects the main look of the building when it's uh, fully assembled so so that's the doors definitely finished along with one black window so now it's time to concentrate on the rest of the build and I think that will be in the next video so until then that's bye from me bye for now bye